So you've got a journey to Hardin Simmons. Tell us what your, your story is. So my story is coming home. It's, it's just coming home. Mm. I started off um, as uh, the second person hired for the inaugural PT, what is now our doctorate of physical therapy program, mm -hmm. and took this scenic tour of getting my undergraduate here, okay. and went out into the world after getting my master's, and came back, and I was the second full-time faculty member here at the master inaugural speech language program. What drew you to speech language? So I was, uh, I had an awesome director in the PT program, Dr. Gould, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, you need to go to school. And I said, well, I'm not really sure. I've always been a little interested in maybe the medical end. So audiology came up, but there wasn't a, a program locally, and I had a young family, and he mentioned and introduced me to the director of the undergraduate speech program, and that's where I began. So uh, the, the kids and the families that come through in a, in a program that have those speech issues, uh, when they get help, is it, what difference does it make? I mean, are they able to do even more in life or, or tell us about that? They certainly are. Um, as, as speech therapists, we can be involved in everything of life in regards to thinking and swallowing and communicating. And they're all done conjunctively. They're not, they're not just eating and they're not just communicating. It's all done together. And so when you're able to work with an individual that has a, a deficit in one or more areas, then they're able to communicate their thoughts, their wants, their needs, their ideas. I, I just recently heard about a famous person whose uh, son had issues with communicating. And it wasn't the, uh, it, a lot of doctors said, well, he's, he's, he's slow and it, you know, his brain's not working like it's supposed to. And he, he rejected that and said, no, it, it, his brain's fine. It's just the communication piece and ended up working on that. Do you find that sometimes kids with speech issues are actually very, very bright? It's just that it's not coming out and we're not able to see some of that? Exactly. Unfortunately, that is the case. We think that the child might be slow, a, a slow learner, um, just a shy, introverted individual, and really, they just don't have the words to be able to communicate what they want to say, to be able to, again, make their thoughts, their wants, their needs, ideas um, identified, to, to really identify who they are and the level of, of their knowledge, of their history, of their background, mm -hmm. yeah. If there's one thing you could do every day for the rest of your life, what would that one thing be that you'd enjoy? Well, I'm, uh, um, that's a tough question because you, you've heard the, the phrase, do what you love and you'll never work mm -hmm. a day in your life. And so I'm there. Okay. I'm there. I get to get up every day and do what I do and be a part of the field that I love doing. It's not work. It's not a job. I get to do it every day. Do you ever get to take a break and have a fun vacation? I do. Um, I. Where's your favorite to go? Are you a mountains or are you a beach person? I'm actually more of a country person. Okay. In that um, I would my I grew up uh, in the military with my dad. Military, 22 years, wow. and so we did a lot of traveling. So I still have that in my system and would love to do that. I would love to travel back to Ireland and um, take the family with me. Is that your favorite place you've ever been? That it is. It is. That's where my, my, both my parents were born and raised. So, and, and we were fortunate to live there for a couple of years. So, wow. yeah. That's great. Well, I appreciate you coming in. Thanks for sharing your story and thanks for sharing uh, what you do with kids and how you change their lives. Thank you. Enjoyed it.